Hello there, everybody. Uh, Dan Calloway again. And today, um, I wanted to get back into my what has become my daily driver in the VM and on the laptop called Slantu Linux, which is based on Gentoo. Uh, actually, Ubuntu, but uh, it's Gentoo based anyway. I'm back in it again. Uh, I've got my uh, background here my applications installed. There's one application. Let me go ahead and empty the trash. I'm telling you, I, I love this operating system. Uh, I've got PC Man FM now installed uh, instead of Kaja. I've still I kept Kaja around, which is a file manager, but I really, really like PC Man FM. So I put that on and it was easy to install. Uh, so let me go ahead and empty the trash. And I'll do that here. Okay, so it's got that, that's emptied. And what I want to do today is get back into an application I touched on in my last video, um, but I want to get into it a little deeper and show you how it works. It's called Portage, uh, I mean Porthole, rather, based on Portage. Portage is the package manager in um, uh, Gentoo. And to use that, uh, let me just get into the terminal. So I'll right click on the terminal. Um, what you do is you type every package that is installed in um, in Gentoo Linux, in this case Slantu, uh, has to be emerged, okay, and that means it has to be brought forth from the re repository uh, through the emerge process, um, which checks its dependencies and a bunch of other things, uh, use flags, uh, keywords, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Again, as I mentioned in my last video. Uh, Gentoo Linux is um, an early, early, early distro of Linux. It does things the way Linux really should do it today, but it doesn't because people are so used to Windows now. Uh, and, you know, they want to click on a double click on an executable and it installs in two, two seconds and it's done. Um, the advantage of doing it the way Gentoo does it now, even today, is that it's more like Unix. Uh, it is a operating system distro that um, builds everything through the compile process and uh, the reason that uh, that's important to me is because it makes the application more stable it makes it more secure makes the operating system more stable and secure because through compiling rather than just uh, installing an executable or binary or tarball uh, it keeps the operating system uh, very stable because it looks at everything about the operating system in the process of installing. Okay, uh, and that's done through something called emerge. One of the first commands that you should run in the command line, if you're familiar with the command line interface, and you're not afraid of it, and you you don't have any problem using it, um, is an emerge, and you can do it as a pretend if you want or you can do it as an ask, which is shortened at da dash A. I'm going to use the uh, switch here. You should do an emerge ask uh, update new use and uh, the other flag that you should use is deep or deep clean and what that does is it goes in and uh, looks at all the dependencies and cleans out any application or any package uh, through the process of installing this package that we were going to give it. Uh, it. It goes in and cleans out any of the remnants of the old packages or dependencies that are not needed okay, by the system itself or by the application you're installing. And so you run an emerge, ask, update, new use, deep clean, and then an at world. All right, what that does on the very first use, and I did this right out of the box when I installed Slantu, is that it updates your world file. Okay, and your world file basically is a file that controls all your repository actions, all right, and uh, dependencies. And so you need to run that command. Uh, the other command that you need to run is an update portage command. And so you would run emerge a portage. And what that would do is it would uh, update the portage uh, repositories as well. And those are the first two commands that you really need to run in Gentoo, uh, or Slantu in this case. 
All right, so let me get out of the terminal, get back here to the desktop. Um, what I want to show you again is Porthole, and the way to get to that is click on Applications, System Tools, and the Porthole Portage Manager. Okay, that's going to bring up uh, an interface, which is the GUI interface uh, in um, Gen2 or Slon2 Linux. It looks like this, and it's going to come up and uh, uh, should be. It's already opened up. Okay, and it's done. Got 20,069 packages here available in the repositories and 170 different categories here in this window under categories. What I'm going to do is show you the installation of a utility that I like called GFTP, and that's the GNOME File Transfer Protocol. Okay, it's equivalent to um, FileZilla or any other file transfer protocol application except it's based in GNOME. Now, Slon2 Linux that I have installed is a Mate desktop environment, and uh, it will accept GNOME packages, obviously. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter here. And you can see that it brings up, for GFTP, it brings up one package, and that package is called the net-ftp-gftp package. Its recommended version is 2.0.19, dot uh, r3 for revision 3. Its download size is 1647 kilobytes and it's a GNOME based FTP client as I mentioned. Alright so I'm going to load that here. Now if you come over here to the right you'll notice it says non-root. I really don't need to be root here when I'm running this particular uh, session of um, porthole. Uh, to get the root version I would need to go into the terminal and go in here and, and do it and show you what it's like. Go into the terminal and I would need to type in the sudo porthole. Right, I'm not going to hit the enter key because that'll bring up a second session and I don't want to do that at this moment. But that will open up the, uh, the root version of porthole and the reason for that is because you're using the sudo command in front of it uh, for super user do. All right. You need to be a member of the sudoers file when you do this, and you will be if your user is set up initially on the installation of Slon2. Um, one thing you have to know about uh, Slon2 Linux or Gen2, it's, it's uh, derivative, um, is that you cannot access the root uh, account. You can't log in as root. You can't even uh, use another administrator account and set up a root password. Root is available. Uh, if I go into uh, cat of Etsy password, you can see that root is there isn't a root account, okay, and it has the Ben Bash um, has Ben Bash as its uh, you know its shell, but it it's not accessible by anybody, okay, and so that's that's a good thing because you don't want to get into the root account. But you do want to be able to get elevated privileges as root, and the uh, sudo or sudo will let you do that. All right, so let's get back to porthole. And uh, in here, what I'm going to do is um, could click on advanced emerge settings. And what that will do is it allows you to create uh, certain emerge options here. For instance, let me go over here. Ask is one of them. If I click in there. It says, before performing the action, display what will take place, server into the sync, pretend, output for merge, and so forth. Then ask whether to proceed with the action or abort. Okay. Um, if you check the pretend, what that's going to do is it's going to append or pretend to install uh, the emerge action that you're requesting the operating system to do. In this case, instead of actually performing the merge, simply display what would have been installed if the pretend weren't used. Okay, it says using pretend is strongly recommended before installing an unfamiliar package. So if you've got one that's unfamiliar to you, uh, you've never installed it before, you've never used it, you don't know how it's going to impact the operating system, if you do just a simple emerge ask, okay, uh, then you probably want to use pretend because that's going to let you see uh, how that's impacting. All right. If you come over here to deep, which is what I told you initially here, the first command that you should use 
through the Emerge process to update the system. This flag forces Emerge to consider the entire dependency tree of packages throughout this whole system. And it's, there's over 20,069 uh, packages here. Instead of checking only the immediate dependencies of the package. So when you use the deep switch, or the flag rather, um, that's going to go out and look at all dependencies. It's going to look to see if anything that you're that this application rather or package that you're currently installing is going to impact any of the other packages that you have that have dependencies that this particular package may or may not have, and take that into account when it installs. Okay. All right. So let's cancel this out. I'm going to just go ahead and use a straight emerge here, and so I'm going to click emerge, and what that does. It, pops it up says I need elevated privileges so I'm going to put that in alright and so now I have elevated privileges it's looking at calculating the dependencies for GFTP and it's going to determine those and then it's going to go ahead and build and compile the GNOME FTP client all right, through a process of compilation uh, like I said, it doesn't just install and run like other Linux distros or Windows does. It actually compiles everything. Now, it could warn me that there's issues, and I would have to work through those issues, such things as these use flags or use uh, words need to be updated in your use file, which is the package.use under Etsy Portage. It may tell you that uh, there are some uh, keywords that need to be added to the package.accept underscore keywords file and I would need to do that and then I would need to run the Etsy dash update or the dispatch dash conf command to update that process alright alright so I didn't get any warnings uh, I can click on the warnings tab and there are many warnings here uh, which are not the warnings that I'm referring to uh, but that doesn't have any impact on the installation of this application it didn't stop it it, it didn't say you need to do this before you can proceed with installing this package all right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the porthole terminal. Uh, I don't have a green circle here yet, but I'm going to go ahead and sync everything in the repositories for Gen 2 under user user portage USR portage, uh, so that that will force that to come up if it did indeed install it the way it should. So I'm going to go ahead and close that, and hopefully uh, it installed uh, the FTP. It's not responding, so let me go ahead and force quit on it. Ah, didn't mean to do that. So let me do back into porthole. And what I'll do is I'll just bring it back up again. I forced quit the application, so um, I just meant to wait for it, but I went ahead and force quit it. All right, so I'm back in again. Let me just bring up uh, GFTP. Once more. And yes, okay, so now... I have the green circle in front of this. Now that means that that is actually installed. Okay, and you can come over here uh, down below under Net FTP GFTP. You can see it says installed versions, right? Which is 2.0.19 revision three, uh, and the available versions for AMD 64, which is what I'm running. I've got a 64-bit processor here, uh, which is uh, an i3-7100. Core Duo Intel, uh, 3.9 gigahertz processor, I believe. So it's got two cores. All right, so it did install the application. So let me go ahead and close um, this now and get back out here. And now let me go into Applications. And if it did install it, it should be under Internet. And there it is, GFTP. So let me right click and add that to the desktop. All right, and so now I've got my application shortcut to the desktop as an icon. Let me right click and open that application, and there it is. All right, I've got 192.168.1.157 is the uh, IP address for my uh, WD My Cloud Personal Cloud, which is a six terabyte personal cloud. I've got uh, Dan Calloway as the username, and I'm going to get into an FTP. Uh, access here using GFTP. I can switch that to SSH2 if I'd like, uh, but I'm going to keep it at FTP. I'm going to go ahead and connect, and it's prompting me for a password. Let me put that in. And let me go ahead and click connect. 
And if everything works, it should connect me, and it did. All right, so it connected me to my personal cloud. So I'm looking at my personal cloud now. And if I double click here on the public side, I've got shared music, documents, shared pictures, software, shared videos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, under shared pictures, let me double click that. I've got a folder called miscellaneous. And if I come under the local side here and come back under the pictures for Slon2, um, I don't have uh, a music or miscellaneous rather folder here. So I'm going to go ahead and select miscellaneous. And then I'm going to hit the left arrow, which is an upload. I'm going to upload or download rather. I'm going to download this from the personal cloud, which I control, to my local system, which is the Slon2 Linux system. So let me go ahead and right click, right arrow. And so it's downloading the entire contents of the miscellaneous folder under pictures. And it's almost done. And it should appear here. And so uh, there it is. Okay, if I double click, there's what should be on my local system. And so let me go ahead and close this now. And let's come back to um, my desktop here in Slon2 Linux. And let me right click on the home directory and open with the PC Man FM. Um, this is the file manager. And so let's get into pictures. Let me double click on pictures. And there's that miscellaneous folder. And here are all the pictures that were downloaded from the personal cloud. All right. So this uh, demonstrates uh, how to use Porthole in uh, Slon2 Linux based on Gentoo. It is a, an operating system that I've installed both in the virtual machine in Oracle and also on my desktop uh, of my uh, Dell Latitude E6400 laptop. It is a daily driver in both of those. Um, on my main PC is a VM in Oracle and on my laptop as well. I love this operating system. It's extremely stable as you can see. Very responsive. Uh, easy to work with. Easy to update and upgrade. Um, uses very little resources of memory. Let me right click and open the terminal here. Let me uh, let's bring up HTOP. And as you can see, I'm only using 263 megs of random access memory out of an available 4 gigs of uh, memory. Uh, my load averages are way low, 0 0.19, 0 0.45, 0 0.41. This is a dual, dual core or duo, core duo, uh, i3 processor. And so anything under 2.0 is good. Anything over 2.0 means you're tasking uh, the CPU beyond its capabilities. Uh, so, you know, I'm not even barely touching the CPU here. And this is CPU right here. It's the dual dual core. 2.0%, 0.7%. I mean, you couldn't ask for any better than that. Uh, and so, um, a great operating system, as I mentioned. Let me go ahead and get out of HTOP. And so, this has been a video to show you the operation of Slon2 Linux and specifically Porthole the GUI for the Portage Package Manager. Have a nice day. Thank you.